it's so itchy. So I guess you just keep on itching it. And when she does scratch, will she make the bite worse? And what attracts mosquitoes? Dr. Carrie Peterson has researched a bunch of summer health myths, so let's start with mosquito bites. Myth or truth? Do you scratch them? They get worse. That's truth, because not a myth. What happens when you get bit by a mosquito, she actually leaves saliva under the skin. She, it's always a it's woman, a she, right? It's a she that bites. Only female mosquitoes bite, actually. A little piece of trivia. So when they bite, they leave a little saliva under the skin, and the body looks at that as a foreign substance, and it reacts to it to try to remove it. And in that process, a lot of chemicals come along, one called histamine. And histamine is the chemical that causes redness and swelling and itching and that characteristic bite that you see. If you scratch it, you now exacerbate that inflammatory process. All those chemicals come racing back to the skin and the itching gets worse. And lasts longer. And lasts longer, that's right. It makes it more difficult to heal. You're aggravating the process. All right, other myths I've heard that, that mosquitoes bite people who have sweet blood. That's a myth, actually. Whatever. What's sweet blood so, I don't know. I don't know where that term came from. There's no such thing as sweet blood. What we do know is that mosquitoes are attracted to carbon dioxide, which is the gas that we exhale when we breathe. So if you breathe more rapidly or if you're exercising, they're more likely to be attracted to you. Or if you're pregnant. Or if you're pregnant, actually. Pregnant women are more likely to get bit because they breathe more heavily and they have a higher content of carbon dioxide in their breath. Also, body heat is a contributing factor and pregnant women have a higher body heat more likely to attract mosquitoes, and if you exercise again, more likely. Moving on, um, if you get a base tan, mm -hmm. that prevents sunburn. That is a myth. Now, there is some truth to that in that a base tan will give you about an SPF of four. So if you normally burn in 20 minutes, That's you'll now protection. burn in 80 minutes. However, That's protection. however, what are we trying to protect against? We're trying to protect against UV damage. UV damage causes skin cancer and premature aging. The base tan does the same exact thing. So you're not alleviating the damage done to your skin simply by getting the base tan. You're, You're delaying the burn, but the wrinkles and the crummy and the skin look cancer happens risk. just as quickly. Exactly. Your eyeballs can get sunburned. They can. Many people don't realize this. I actually, I had a patient who came in a couple of days ago. He said, I was out on a boat all day this past weekend, and the next day my, light, my eyes were so sensitive to the light. I said to him, your eyeballs got sunburned. The UV rays Those from the Those are the sun. symptoms. Bloodshot eyes, light sensitivity, extra tearing. And extra tearing are the symptoms that you have done some damage to your eyes. So it's very important to wear sunglasses that have UV protection in them. S don't they all? No, not all of them do. They all have some, right? Not necessarily. You really have to look on the label. Not all do. And assume you can trust the label. Uh, let's move Good on point. to jellyfish stings. They can be nasty. And if you watch the sitcom Friends, you may think you know the cure. There's really only one thing you can do. What? What is it? You're going to have to pee on it. Yeah, I saw it on the Discovery Channel. I've heard this. Myth? It's a myth. There's no evidence to show that peeing on a jellyfish sting helps at all. But what we it do might make know... It it worse in some cases. Uh, it, can uh, it can potentially irritate the skin. What can work is white vinegar. If you soak a washcloth in white vinegar and you place it on the sting for about 30 minutes, something about the acidity of the vinegar can inactivate the stinger of the jellyfish. So try that instead. Okay, last myth, don't swim in a full stomach. This is an old wives' tale that has perpetuated for decades. My mother said, you have gotta wait half an hour. You don't have to wait, it's a myth. The idea behind this is that when you eat, food is divert, a blood is diverted to the gut to help you digest. And then when you go in a pool, if the blood is in the gut, how is it going to get to the muscles? You get cramps, and then you drown. Oh. Right. That's the, that's the thought. Makes sense. It's never actually been documented. And in fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Red Cross have never made recommendations to wait after having a meal. Now, what may happen is that the act of swimming, your adrenaline is up, the blood circulates more, it that, still gets to the muscles. That could counteract it, but also you do get a warning. If you do, let's say you do get a little cramp, it's not going to be debilitating enough for you to not be able to get out of the pool in time. Well, if you're out in the ocean. In the ocean, again, never been documented. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Coming up, 